group talk about calming the storms. I've had plenty this week. Imagine everybody else has too, huh? And then a uh, pastor asked me to go beyond my comfort zone. I'm the one to choose the, the song today. Uh, I said, nope, it ain't happening. And Rod happened to been on the other side of the line. So I prayed to God. He told me to do it. And this weekend I had one tremendous storm. It was but he brought me through all of it. And it goes something like this.
church. Good morning. It's good to be back here in, in the house of the Lord. Uh, we know it's a sobering time. Um, I was actually here on the, um, the 26th of the month. Um, it was a blessing. My wife was with me, and it was, um, it was a joy to have her here. And um, I had a, another friend with me and his wife, a, a honeymoon couple as well. And, you know, the focus was to um, share the light of the gospel, you know, let your light so shine. And it's when I think of the times where we're in right now, you know, like Pastor Mark calling me um, to stand in, um, stand in the pulpit on his behalf. Because he can't be here again because of the passing of his son-in-law. It's a tough time. My heart breaks. And I know um, many of you here. All of you here, I'm sure, your heart breaks as well for the family of Karen and, and the passing of Eric, uh, Pastor Mark and uh, Pauline and the children, the children that are left. I'm going to have a word of prayer. And the reason why I say it's so sobering because it's like the, the, my message, what I kind of want to share with you is it's, it's so important. It's so important that knowing that these are the last days. And it's important that, that we get this. There's a calling on our lives, and it's for purpose. So let me pray, please. Father in heaven, God, I just come before you in Jesus' name. There is no other name that is given under heaven with which men shall be saved. The Bible says it's in the name of Jesus that every knee is going to bow. Those that are in heaven, on the earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you here this morning as we gather in your house. We pray in Jesus' name, O oh God, for fellowship with you and fellowship with each other. We pray, God, that you would move by your Holy Spirit here this morning. Father, that we would hear a word in season. And God, that it would encourage us, O oh God. It would encourage us, Father, to, to make whatever changes are necessary in our lives. Father, that we would see the importance of these days and these last days. And God, that we would, we, that we would walk in our purpose. Father, I want to pray. Father, we pray for Karen. We pray for the passing of her husband, Eric. God, we pray in Jesus' name as they're having that service this morning. And I understand, God, there's over 500 um, uh, bikers, uh, uh, wartime veterans, as Eric was, a vet. Uh, uh, and I'm praying, God, that as they come together, as they gather together to celebrate Eric's life, we pray for the glory of God. Yes. Oh, God, we pray in Jesus' name, oh, God, that you will comfort this family. God, that you would bless Oh, God, and that you would heal, God, and that you would comfort in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, oh, God, for, for Karen, oh, God, and, and God, that you would provide for her. God, that you would provide for the children. Oh, God, so we celebrate Eric's life, God, and, and we know it's a tough, tough time. We pray that you would give Pastor Mark your words, his wife's sister Pauline, God, that you would comfort them. And, God, that you would just um, use them, Father, through this difficult, difficult time. We pray that God would get the glory. We thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, family, it's good to be here. You know, so when um, I came, uh, I, I shared a message on, that says, A city on a hill cannot be hidden. That came out of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14. And, and and I talked about that, and my purpose for wanting to share that was that we all have a testimony. We all have a testimony of where God brought us from, amen? And all of us, all of us have been through something. We all have something to share, what God has not only done, but what he continues to do in your life. And a lot of times, people don't want to share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know if some people are ashamed or some people just have that fear. But I tell you, 
the Lord. He says he wants our light to shine. Amen. He says a city on a hill cannot be hidden. He says no person lights a lamp and puts it under a basket or puts it under a bowl. Instead, it puts it on a lampstand and then it gives light to the whole house. Amen. So he says, so let your light so shine before men and before women that they would see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven. Thank God he saved me. Thank God he saved you. Thank God he pulled us out of that muck and out of that miry clay. Thank God he shed his light into our hearts. Amen. And he's given us this glorious gospel. Thank God for that. So when he says, let your light so shine before men and women that they would see your good deeds. You know, we're living in a dark time. These are dark times that we're living in. And, and I don't want to, when I look at this, I said, I don't want to get caught up in politics. Let me help you with this. There's Republicans and there's Democrats. I get it. Amen. And we may have a party that we favor. But I'll tell you what, we serve a king. Amen. We serve a king. And it says his kingdom come and his will be done. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. So I have to take that stand right in the middle. I'm serving a king. And my time here on earth, it's short. Amen. And I want to lift up the name of Jesus. Why? Because he's coming and he's coming soon. So I don't get caught up on the left side and I don't get caught up on the right side. I get caught up on his side. Amen. And that's what our mission should be. With that, in your Bibles, if you have your Bibles with you, please go to 1 Peter, chapter 1, chapter 2, actually, verse 9. The reason why I've chosen this scripture... I've chosen the title, yeah, You're Chosen for Purpose. I never knew. I never knew in my life that God was going to use me to share the gospel. It wasn't in the cards for me. I know I grew up in a place called New Bedford, Massachusetts. And, and I, I ran with my friends and I'd I done things that normal kids do, and I got in trouble, and, and then again, I spent time behind the wall in, in, in prison. I had my stint in jail, and, and I dibbled and dabbled in drugs, and I, and, I, and I did drugs for lots of years, and I was discouraged, discouraged, and I had no hope. I had no future. I seen jail as a revolving door. And I saw myself just doing the same things over and over and over again. There was no escape. I couldn't even get out of my community. You know, and I did spend some time in the Coast Guard. I'm a Coast Guard vet, amen. And, and it was good, good time in the service. But I still couldn't get away from my environment. I couldn't, in my mind, I couldn't get away from the drug use. I couldn't get away from the hate. I couldn't get away from the anger. I kept finding myself doing the same things over and over again. I was discouraged. I never saw myself, years later, I never saw myself sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But there was a starting point. There was a starting point where I said, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I didn't know what he was saving me from. I didn't know what he was saving me to. I had no clue. All I wanted was help. I wanted, I wanted to be out of the mess that I was in. I didn't even want to live at times. And I said, Jesus, please save me. Do you know that when, when Jesus saved me, that my life was already mocked by him? Do you know that, that, that my life from the beginning of time, amen, he already knew everything that I was going to go through. God knew it. I didn't know it, but God knew it because he, is, he knows the beginning to the end. He knows your complete life. He knows everything that you're going to do. And here I am. I'm discouraged. I'm broken and I'm disgusted and I don't even want to live. And yet God has a purpose for me. Hello. Amen. I never saw that coming. 
I, I never saw myself sharing the gospel. I never saw myself having the joy that I have today. All I saw myself was a broken individual. And I was hurting people and people were hurting me. But today, but today I got Christ in my life. Amen. I got this glorious, I got the, I got the hope. I got the hope. I got joy in my heart. I got hope in my heart today. Why? Because God saved me for purpose. And he saved every one of you the same. He saved you for purpose. You know, there's a call on your life. When he saved you, he called you. He called you for purpose. And the goal is that you'll find out what that purpose is. So over here in 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen people or a chosen generation or a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, or a people of his own possession, so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Verse 10 says, once, at one time, you were not a people. But now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11. It says, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from sinful Desires that war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. You know, there's, there's four things that believers are to God. Excuse me for the phone. We gotta get this. It's four things that believers are to God. In 1 Peter 2 5, he says, number one, your royal priesthood. Do you know when the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom, it gave us access into the most holiest place? Do you know we have access with God? Do you know the chief privilege? The chief privilege of a priest is access to God. These times that we're living in, it calls for somebody to have access to God. That's who we are. Amen? We're also intercessors. He calls us to intercede on behalf of those who are still living in darkness. For those who can't intercede for themselves, he calls us to do just that. Here we are as the body of believers. We know that Pastor Mark called me up and he asked me if I would please um, um, stand in for him. He didn't have to ask two times. I live for this. And you live for this. This is what we're called to. We're called to stand in the gap. We're called to intercede. We're called to, to bring our prayers, spiritual sacrifices. Amen. The Bible says, let the fruit of your lips make mention of his name. We have access with God. So we come to God on behalf of others. And you know that there's also power in agreement. Amen. There's, there's power when saints come together in the name of the Lord. The Bible says that where two or three come together in my name, I'm in the midst of you. Amen. So he's in our midst. So when we lift up individuals in prayer, we know that God's backing that up. And that's what we're called to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't see myself as a young man growing up. I didn't see myself as a prayer warrior. I didn't see myself as one man who had access to God. I didn't see that. But God saw that. When God called you, he knew. He called you for purpose. 
And he wants to use you to the fullest. Amen? And I believe he's doing that right now. I know he's touching your heart right now. I know he is because he's good. Amen? He's a good, good God. And because he called you out of darkness and into his light, he has, a, he has his hand on you. He's guiding you. That's who he is. Let me go a little further. So it says, you are a royal priesthood. The, the second thing, because there's four things. That believers are to God. The second thing that you are to God is when he, he gave himself, t- Titus 2.14 says, He gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself people that are his own possession. Eager to do what is good. So he cleansed you. He purified you. He's calling you a people that are his own possession. You belong to God. You belong to him. You don't belong to yourself. It's like the minute you got saved, when he saved you, he not only became your savior, but he also became your Lord. When you you say, come into my heart, yeah, he saved you. The Bible says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Romans 12, 1. It's a spiritual, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. says, it's our spiritual act of service. It's just our reasonable service, amen? When, when, when he saved us, the sacrifice doesn't sanctify the altar, but the altar sanctifies the sacrifice. The minute he saved you, Positionally, you're made holy. He looks at you, you're holy. When he sees you, he sees the blood of Jesus. You've been cleansed. Your past sins, your, your, your sins, your future sins, they've been cleansed for, they've been atoned for. Amen? When he sees you, all he sees is the blood. You are holy in his sight. But then he says like this, be holy because I am holy. So we still have work to do. But thank God for that, that there's work to do. Amen? But positionally, you've been made holy. You, you've been cleansed. <laughs> My God. The sacrifice doesn't sanctify the altar. But it's the altar that sanctifies the sacrifice. So when he gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself... A people that are his own, that are his very own, and then eager to do what is good. The third thing that believers are to God comes out of Philippians 2.15. says, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God. He calls you a child of God. Without fault in the crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out the word of life. The fourth thing that believers are to God. Revelation 1.6 says to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. Verse 6 says, and he made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and father. When I tell you that he chose in you and he chose me, he called us and he chose us for purpose, it's that God would get the glory. Believers are a chosen race. You see, the first Adam brought sin and death on the whole human race. But the last Adam brought spiritual life to believers from every ethnic group. All physical and cultural distinctions are subservient to this greater category. We are the children of God. There's no, there's no other race. There's, no, there's nothing there. When he says you are the 
children of God. We hold the cards. We hold the cards. You know, if there's things that's going to change, it's going to change through your prayers. It's going to change through my prayers. There's power in prayer. Amen. We can change history through prayer and through fasting. This is who we are as believers. So when I look at, again, when we look at the political scene, you've got the right and you've got the left. But he says, your kingdom come. Because we serve a king. He says, your kingdom come and your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And the Bible goes on to say that the God of this age, who we speaking of Satan, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Not the eyes, but has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. He's the prince of the seer. But Jesus is the prince of peace. And Jesus called us for purpose that we would share his gospel, that God would get the glory. The people of God are a holy nation. Not a perfect people. I look at my life and I say, I'm so far from perfect. I, I, I make so many mistakes every single day. Just ask my wife. And I'm in a new marriage. <laughs> I just got married on April 9th. But ask my wife. And I keep putting my foot in my mouth. I'm learning to do this life. I'm learning. Even on my job. I'm so far from perfect. But, but you know, when we look at perfect in the Bible, there's maturity. So, so when, he, when he tells us to be holy, yeah, that's a part of sanctification. Amen? He's not counting our sins against us. He's cleansed us from all of that. But he's called every one of us for purpose. So it says like this, the people of God, we are a holy nation, not a perfect people, but a people set apart for a passion to live corporately and to please God. So we are a people of his possession. We're not special because of who we are but because of the one to whom we belong. That's what makes us special. Mm. Wow. I got to get a grip on this. So when I think back, when I, when I think back and I said, okay, I start reading the Bible and I start to learn to apply the Bible to my life. And learning to do that, you know, that requires faith, right? Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, all of us as believers, we're encouraged and we're told to study the word of God. Learn the word of God. Why? Because as you begin to read the word of God, the, reader, the word of God begins to read you. Amen? And you see yourself through the scriptures. None of us are going to learn how to live for God unless we hear it from God. It's through his word. So when, so the, so when the writer to the book of Romans says, um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, well, you read the, God, read the word of God out loud. As you read the word of God out loud, you're hearing it too. Amen? And your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in our walk, every one of us, we need to hear from God. In order for us to live this life, in order for us to please God, we need to hear from him. And he called us, not only saved us, but he called us for his purpose. And part of his purpose is studying the word of God. And they're responding to it in faith. So we are the people of his possession, not special because of who we are, but because of the one to whom we belong. Because you are God's property, property and along with a new identity. God's people are to live a whole new lifestyle. The Bible says that you are to proclaim the praises of, 
of the one who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So you and I are to serve as an advertisement agency tasked with sharing the message of love. When I, when I um, got saved, I got saved to a prison, to a prison ministry is where I got saved. And I didn't have a lot of love growing up. I didn't have that. Like, again, I, w- I never saw myself sharing the gospel. Again, I was broken. I was hurting. I, I didn't like people. But as I began to read, as I began to pray, as I began to study, I began to see my purpose. It started to come clearer and clearer and clearer. And still today, still today, God's blowing my mind in the things that he's sharing with me today. I share this with you because when I shared, when he talks about letting your light shine before others, that they will see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I don't know how you respond on the work job. I'm hoping that you're letting your light shine, that when people see you as an advertising agency, that they're seeing the gospel, that they're seeing Jesus in your life. And, and, and I know that there's people on the work job, there's people out there that are hurting. There's people outside this church that are struggling right now. And you have the message of hope. It's you who hold the key. Amen? It's you who have what, what they need. You have the gospel. You have this glorious light. And there are so many today that just don't even know how to get themselves out of bondage. And and God brought you up out of bondage. God shed his light in your life. He took you out of darkness. He took you, I'm going to say it again. Wow. He took you out of darkness. In other words, he picked you up, took you out of that place that you were at, and he brought you into his marvelous light. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And it's nothing that you've done. It's nothing that you deserved. It's called mercy. It's called grace. It's grace. That's God's grace. He did that because he has a purpose for your life to use you to the fullest. And I know this church well because I know the pastor well. Pastor Mark is a good friend of mine. We go back to Newport. Assembly of God, when he had the, uh, uh, the church up there in 2005. So I've been friends with him for years, him and his wife. This is a man who loves God, just like you. Amen? You all love God. And, and I know that Pastor Mark's got such a giving heart, such a caring heart. And you all, you all his congregants, you come up under his umbrella here. So I know that this is a good church. This is a powerful church. This is a church that's reaching out to the community. Pastor Mark was doing the same thing up in Newport when he was up there. He was reaching out to the community, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in that community. And you know, now that he's down here in Springfield, and I know that this church was already established, so Pastor Mark came in and just complimented it, and we got good congregants in here. I love this church right here because I know that this is a powerful church and that this church here is reaching out to the community. This church lets their light shine before others, that others would see the good deeds that come up out of this church. I know that's taking place. I know that's happening. And that's why I don't mind coming here because I love coming here because this is family. And I know that you all are doing the things that God has called you to do. Praise God. It's a good church. I want to read verse 11. I want to read verse 11 and verse 12. It says, Dear friends, I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. 
conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that when they slander you as evildoers, they will observe your good works and will glorify God on the day he visits us. Christ's followers are actually strangers and exiles. So this fallen world then is not our home. We're passing through. We're here for a short time. Roughly 70 or 80 years, it's a pit stop. It's a pit stop on the way to our eternal destination. We just prayed earlier for um, Sister Lenny's, uh, Glenny's husband. And um, we understand his time is very short. And we, we thank God for his life. And, and we thank God for Sister Glennie. And, and I've been coming in this church here since 2015. And, and I know Sister Glennie, she's a good Bible teacher here in the church. I know that, um, I believe it's Wednesdays, she comes up and she stands right here with the glass table here and, and, and she does Bible study. Is that still happening here? Oh, praise God. And um, she's been faithful. I don't know her husband, I, and I, I only know Glennie a little bit, but I know that, that she loves the Lord and she's been faithful sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So she let her light shine, and I saw that a while ago. And that's why I ask for her when I come here, because I know she's, oh, she's like a pillar here in this church. And I don't know her husband, but I thank God that we're able to pray for him here today because he's soon he's going to be making the transition soon. And we thank God for that, that we're able to pray for him and we're able to pray comfort to the family. And you know, in these days, in these times that we're living in, people are passing. They're passing around us. And you know, in, in my personal life right now, my wife, who I just married, um, she lost her first son June 2nd, 2021. She lost her son, and then she has two sons. And then just um, this past June, Fifth, she lost her second son. So within 300, this is very personal, but within 365 days, my wife, who I just married, she lost her son. And then the, the boy, both boys, their father, died on September 19th. And then the youngest son just died on June 5th. So all three meals to the family. June 2nd, September 19th, June 5th. My wife, Renee, is going through a difficult time, of course, and not only her, but the family. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, you put me in this marriage and I am, I'm here to encourage Renee and encourage his family to survive, to, to press on, and, and, and to, to love God and not get bitter. And I look at this because I see, I'm seeing my purpose being fulfilled. And I'm seeing how God's using me as a pillar not only to help her, but to help the whole family. Amen. Now, I want to share this with you because that's pers this is very personal. But when I share with you that God saved you for purpose, there are so many people around you that needs to see the light of the gospel and need to hear the gospel from you. You know, the Bible says that God's not willing that one person would perish, 
but that all would come to repentance. All. Not one person would perish. And there are people who are harassed and helpless. Jesus said they're harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send shepherds into his harvest field. We all have a purpose that God wants to use us for his glory in these last days. So, so this fallen world then is not at home, right? 70, 80 years, it's just a pit stop. It's not our final destination. So the Christian's job, I'm going to say assignment. See, he says his job, but for me, it's, it's, this is my assignment. He says the Christian's assignment during this period is to make a difference for God in this world. Because, because we're ambassadors, he calls us ambassadors, an ambassador is sent to represent, right? So what the United States does is we send ambassadors into foreign countries to represent our country on foreign soil. So here we are as believers. We're here as strangers. We're here as pilgrims. We're passing through. But he calls us ambassadors. So if we're ambassadors, we're here to represent our kingdom here on this earth. That's the goal. He says, we are to abstain from sinful desires. That means you and I should not be doing what everybody else is doing. You see, I gave up drinking. Thank God I got saved. I gave up drinking. I gave up drugs. I gave up swearing. I gave up smoking. I gave these things up because God, the light of the gospel, came into my heart. He cleansed me. He cleansed me. He changed my life around. He gave me a whole new identity. I'm not that same old person who used to rob people, who used to hurt people. I'm not that person any longer. That's the old man. That man's dead. Amen? I have a new identity in Christ. You have a new identity. You're not the old person. You're not the same person made over. No, you are a new creation. The old person's dead. So now we are encouraged to die to our flesh. So where he says we are to abstain from sinful desires, that means Mike Dua will not be doing those things that I used to do. It encourages us we are to conduct ourselves honorably among the Gentiles, among the people in the world, or those who don't know the Lord. We are to conduct ourselves in, in such a way that brings glory to God. Jesus told his disciples, let your light shine before unbelievers. This is where I started this message two weeks ago, and I'm coming right back around it. He says, let your light so shine before unbelievers so that they would see your good works and glorify God. In other words, go public with your faith. Go public with your faith and, and shine. Just shine. Influence your neighbors. Influence your community. Influence those on the work job. When you go to McDonald's, when you go out to eat, I see Jean in the back raising her hand. I'm a McDonald's fan too. <laughs> but wherever we go, you know, we're encouraged to, to let our light shine before others that, that they would be changed, that they'll have an opportunity to, to, to come to the Lord. So saying this today, family, I call you family because I'm close here and I love it here. 
you know, and, and when um, this church is in it, it's going through a tough time. It's one thing that we have. We have access with God and we have power with God. And then, you know, we're called to intercede on, on those who can't intercede for themselves, those who don't know how to, those who are just really broken today. And you know some of these people. They're in your community. But we can make a difference today. Amen? Amen. Saying that, you know, I, I thank God for the ministry that I work for. I work for the ministry of Teen Challenge. And I witness every single day, I witness men, I witness women who come into the program who don't know the Lord. And it's hard. It's hard for them uh, at first because everyone comes in discouraged. Nobody comes to the doors of Teen Challenge Ministry because they got it going on. Nobody comes into the program because they're influential. Every person comes in hurting, needing hope, needing help. Sometimes they come in on their own. Sometimes they come in their wife ordered. <laughs> Sometimes they come in their court ordered. However, they come in, they get there. I believe it was always God ordered. I believe that it's God ordered because God knows the beginning from the end. And God is, and he allows sin to run its course in your life and in their lives to get them to a place where now they recognize, just like I did. Just like I did. And maybe that's where you're at too. Just like when you gave your life to Christ, it was at your lowest point. Well, you know, there are still a lot of people out there today that are at their lowest point. So I can't relax on this because God's blessing me or God's helping me or, or, God's, uh, uh, um, or God has me in a good place. No, all the more, I must be eager to make my calling and election sure. I must be more diligent today than I was before. Why? Because these days are evil. And you know, there are people who are dying. There are people who are giving up. So, so it's, it's you and I who's going to make a difference. But when I say I work through these doors, the Teen Challenge, I thank God because every single day I get to see sisters, young girls, and I get to see the men who come in, and they come in broken, but then I get to see them start to live. Amen? Yeah, yeah. I see them start to live, and, 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 they, and, and they start to pick their head up, and they start to shine themselves. And then they go out on choir. Amen? And they go out on choir, and then they start to share their testimony. You know, that's a big part of their walk and encouraging them. They encourage themselves as they encourage others. I encourage myself all the time as I encourage others. So I want to encourage you. Amen? As you let your light shine, as you encourage others, believe me, God will encourage you. So today... Today, please, take a chance today. Come out of a comfort zone. Come out of a place that you may have been where it's been comfortable. Make a change. Let your light shine. I say that because this is such a powerful church. And I know there's somebody in your life who does need to hear the gospel. There's somebody you know, and maybe God's tugging on you. Share the gospel with them. I want to challenge you to do that today. Take that chance. God gets the glory. Amen? With that, can we stand? Waiting for Brother Rod to come forward.
So a couple of weeks ago, again, I shared the, uh, the scripture I used was Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16. Today, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, you're a chosen generation. Yes, we are. We are a royal priesthood. A high calling on our life today. None of us seen this. We didn't see this coming. When I say that we didn't see it coming was, I don't believe anybody saw yourself as really living for God back in the day. But after salvation, today, My prayer is going to be here this morning is that God not only uses us in our prayer chamber to pray for others, but that where there's been so much heartache and, and grief, that there maybe there's someone that we can encourage through the gospel of Jesus Christ today. Please don't forget to continue to pray for Sister Glennie and her husband. Please continue to pray for Pastor Mark, Sister Pauline, for his daughter Karen. I believe it's five children, four children, three girls and one boy. The little boy's the youngest. Had a good conversation with Pastor Mark last night. Early yesterday, and of course, he's broken. Everyone's broken. So we pray for hope. We pray for help. We pray for provision. That God just bless his family. Heavenly Father. Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace. This morning, the Bible says that we would receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We are the believers of God. We're the sons of God, the daughters of God. We've come with such a boldness to your throne. And we thank you for such a great salvation. And we come to intercede on behalf of Pastor Mark and his family. God, again, will you please comfort this entire family through this difficult time, we pray. We pray, God, that um, you will provide for their every need, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray for all the families and friends who are gathering this day up in Newport to grieve and then to celebrate the life of Eric. Father, I'm praying that through this difficult time that people would come to know you because you are the God of all comfort and that you would comfort and that you would heal. In Jesus' name. And Father, for Sister Glennie and her husband, Jake, God, we pray for Jake that you comfort him, God, as he's ready to make this transition. We thank you for him, and we pray, God, again, you are the God of all comfort. Comfort our sister, Glenny, comfort Jake, comfort the entire family. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, if there are individuals here in this church today who are struggling or who are having a hard time, uh, who are uh, maybe being broken in, in a particular area, I ask God that you would come alongside and help in a time of need. 
Father, that you would help and that you would deliver and set free in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, O oh God, for Springfield Assembly of God. God, will you have your hand upon this church? Father, that this church, God, would continue to shine. God, in this community. God, I know there's, um, there's, there's brokenness all around us here. The, the prison's right down the street, Father. And we pray that, that you would reach individuals there. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, that they would be encouraged. That they wouldn't give up, oh, God, in Jesus' name, or want to give up. But, Father, that you would help them as well. And, Father, that this church, oh, God, would just continue to reach out, oh, God, and make a way where others, oh, God, um, can't seem to find their way. That this church would be a beacon in this community. Father, that the message of hope would ring from here, I pray. I thank you so much, oh God, for um, um, the men who stand up here um, to worship in song. Um, Ken, the drummer, and Gary, the guitar player, and Rod, the, the pianist, God. I thank you, God, for them and their faithfulness. And I ask, God, that you continue to mold them and shape them into the men of God that you've called them to be and that you continue to help them shine as they are. Letting their light shine, God, in Jesus' name. So please continue to bless them. And Father, we close out the service, God, with such gratitude in our hearts today. Grateful, oh God, that you've given us this day. This day wasn't promised, but you've given it to us. So help us, oh God, to bring glory to your name in all that we do, in all that we say. And as we leave from here today, we pray, oh God, that you will bless us on the highways and the byways. Bless us on our work jobs. Bless us in the home. And help us to make a difference, oh God, this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you. Don't forget tonight, we have uh, a former pastor actually coming tonight, mm. Pastor Kemp. He's going to be here to minister the word tonight, so it's uh, going to be a special time, so make sure you come on out. God bless everybody.